We're going to continue on uh, talking about signal processing. In particular, we're going to now focus our attention on thinking about both time and frequency of signals that we're going to be looking at both in the Fourier domain and the relationship back to the time domain. In many ways, what we've been doing is thinking about taking our signals either in time and analyzing that time series, or mostly what we've been doing is putting into the frequency domain where we've now lost the time component altogether and we're just looking at the frequency content. So what we're going to try to do is now make use of both time and frequency together to understand the signal, which means we're going to have to take a little bit deeper dive into what this signal looks like in the Fourier domain. In particular, uh, what we want to look at is the impulse response, both how that reacts in the frequency domain, both its amplitude and its phase. So that's going to be kind of what we're actually after. So time and frequency filtering or time and frequency analysis of the signal. And remember, what we're looking at is a signal coming in. We have a Fourier transform to put it in the frequency domain. And so we want to look a little bit more carefully at this frequency domain and the content that we have there and do an analysis of what overall is happening in the frequency domain, especially when we think about an LTI system and some response function h which takes an input to an output so that's what we're going to focus in now on this this is now chapter six in Oppenheim and Wilski and so we're going to really dig down on this a bit so the first thing we're going to do is start thinking about more carefully about this frequency content and what's happening in the frequency domain in particular we can think about taking a signal in the frequency domain and decomposing it into an amplitude and a phase. So in other words, a signal in the frequency domain, here it is, is now having some amplitude, which you can just think of the absolute value of the function in the frequency domain, times a phase. And so this notation here means the phase of that signal as a function of frequency. So the amplitude and phase characterization, most of what we've been plotting, for instance, is just the absolute value and throwing away the phase information. But now we want to retain this phase information because it's quite important what the phase is doing in terms of manipulating signals going through our system. So this is the continuous version here of this amplitude phase decomposition. But in the discrete time signals, this is this representation. But it's pretty much equivalent. You think about the amplitude of the frequency content that you're getting from here, as well as the phase. And again, there's the phase or the angle uh, in, in the real, against the real imaginary part in the phase domain. So we want to start looking at that representation of the signal. So remember, we're, we're really focused in on these LTI systems. So here's the LTI system, right? So we're going to come in with some signal X. It's going to hit some response H to produce an output Y. And so what we're going to start really thinking about is what is the what is the deeper dive here is what's the amplitude and phase in the frequency to, domain of this H? Because the way we're going to solve this right in the Fourier domain is by taking a Fourier transform. And so if we have a continuous signal, here's what the Fourier transform gives us. It tells us that basically the output is just the Fourier transform of the input signal, Fourier transform of the response function, and that gives us the Fourier transform of the output signal, which I can just then invert with the Fourier transform. In a discrete case, it's given by here. This is the equivalent formulation in a discrete case. But again, all I'm thinking about here is working in the Fourier domain to get my solution. And now we want to look at this H here in the Fourier domain and start understanding its amplitude and its phase. What this is ultimately going to lead us through in a series of lectures here is what's called a Bode plot which is a characterization of the response function of a LTI system, not just an LTI system. A Bode plot is a more generic object, which can allows us to think about characterizing any input-output relationship, because what it does is it characterizes both the phase response and the intensity response of the signal in the frequency domain. Okay, so that's what we're going to work towards. But we're going to start here just trying to take some signals, H, and start to learn how to do amplitude phase decompositions of these signals. So here's some properties we should keep in mind, properties such as the following here, which is if I have the ability to take the absolute value of, in other words, the amplitude in the frequency domain of y is equal to the absolute value of the impulse response in the Fourier domain times the absolute value of 
the input response in the Fourier domain. So this here, this relationship is easy to show. And the phase, the phase of the output is the sum of the phases of both the response signal plus the phase of the input signal. So these are really nice properties. These are for LTI systems. And so we can take advantage of these in terms of thinking about things like this, which is notice what happens. I have an input signal with a phase. It's gonna be basically added to the phase response of the H, which is the impulse response. And the amplitudes, at least the magnitude of the frequency is just a uh, pure multiplication. So that's one of the properties we have on these LTI systems. And so we want to start manipulating these and starting to get a better understanding of both phase and amplitude relationships. So as a very specific example, we're going to take this here as our response function. H i omega is e to the negative i omega t naught. Now remember, this is a pure, this is like a, uh, this is a one frequency in, uh, in, the, in the Fourier domain, right? It's a, it's a, right here it's just it's a it's a it's a single Fourier mode as it were at e to i omega t naught and we're going to start asking questions about let's let's start to understand this signal and uh in its amplitude and its phase so for this very simple signal the amplitude is very easy to do you could just simply look at this and say what is the amplitude of this in terms of uh, we could take this signal multiply by its complex conjugate and take the square root of that and of course, if you take the complex conjugate, e to the minus i omega t naught times e to the plus i omega t naught, those amplitudes, when you multiply together, the phases basically add up to zero. So you get e to the zero, which is one. So you always get this here. So this signal here has a magnitude one. And its phase, well, you can just look at this, e to the i, and then the phase here is minus omega t naught. So this is your phase of that signal. And it turns out the phase is very important because if you manipulate the phase of a signal, okay, what it's going to do, it's going to actually do two things potentially for the signal. If you have a linear phase like this, it's actually going to shift the signal in time. But if you have a nonlinear phase response to the system, it actually deforms the signal itself. So this is very important to think about if you know what the phase response is, it's going to have a big impact on shaping signals in your LTI systems. So that's one way to think about doing signal processing is you have the ability both to manipulate the absolute value of the response, but also the phase. And the phase is critical because it actually allows you to do a lot of manipulation of the signal just by adding phase to the signal in, in, some, in such a way that you want to get a certain response. Okay, so by the way, this is actually not that hard to compute. You can look up in your Fourier transform tables and that if you do the inverse of this against some input, then this is what you get. The output signal y of t is just x shifted by t naught. So we've already actually done this calculation previously. We worked this out before when we were looking at Fourier transforms. And so here, if I just multiply by this phase component, which is what I'm doing, remember what you've done is you've gone into the Fourier domain here, right? You're gonna take the solution is the input signal and what you're multiplying by is just some phase factor. All the phase factor did is it shifted the signal in time. In this case, you're shifting the signal by this omega, t, by t naught, okay? So that's the, a very simple function we're looking at, but it already starts to show you that what you can do with this is you can use the ability to manipulate the phase as a way of manipulating the signal itself. So, for instance, this is the picture of what we just did. So you come in with a signal, and then if you hit it with that response, which is essentially a phase, linear phase ramp on it, what it does is it shifts the signal over by T naught, whatever T naught happens to be. In this case, it's 10. So that's a very simple manipulation of a signal, which allows you to delay the signal by some T naught. And so this is a practical way to <coughs> be able to time sync signals together by just simply manipulating their frequency content and then creating a delay structure in them. More generally, this is very interesting, is if you can add a nonlinear phase to your signal. So here you go, some g of omega where this is no longer, you know, omega t, but it could be something like omega squared t or omega cube t or 
uh, something like this, so it's a nonlinear response, <coughs> then what's going to happen is you not only will reshape the pulse, but then if you do have a linear part, it will actually shift it also in position. So in, let's just do the following. Let's take this as two components. Some nonlinear function of omega plus a linear piece. The linear piece itself is going to shift this thing by t naught. <coughs> the nonlinear piece is actually going to shift. It's going to actually warp the function itself. So depending upon what that nonlinear shape is, you actually warp the time function itself. So here's an example of this. If I were to have taken that initial pulse here, let me give you this, the same initial pulse, and now if I multiply this in the phase domain by some nonlinear phase shift, so uh, right, plus a linear piece, what it's going to do, the linear piece is going to shift it, and the nonlinear piece is going to actually change the shape of the signal itself. So here's one representative thing that could happen based upon that g omega, is it changes the shape of the pulse, and then this piece here shifts that pulse over by a certain amount. So you can start to see the diversity of things you can do to a signal simply by manipulating the phase. That is the entire point of this, is that once we get into this response function, we can think about the response function. We want to generate or engineer a system where the response function is we prescribe these pieces here in order to achieve a signal on the output that we wish. So you can just simply do some phase manipulation, not only your phase manipulation, to restructure the pulse itself or restructure the signal itself, and you can put a linear phase ramp on there to actually shift it in time. So that's those are the, some of those very basic signal processing operations that we can start thinking about doing now by manipulation of phase. And again, we haven't talked about phase really. What we've mostly been doing is just thinking about filtering where there's no phase manipulation in the Fourier domain. And now when we think about time frequency, the phase manipulation comes into play. It allows us a lot of flexibility in terms of manipulation of signals. We can do the same thing with discrete signals. So in a discrete signal case, let's say this is my discrete signal. <coughs> this is the analog of the pulse. I can simply multiply it by a phase component, linear phase component, and it's going to shift it. So for instance, if I multiply by a phase component with 5, t naught is 5, it's going to shift it over here to 5. So that's why I've delayed my signal by 5 units. If in addition, I multiply by some nonlinear phase, so for instance, or first, if I just make a nonlinear phase shift, this thing here can be warped into a new signal form. So that's really important. So I haven't done anything except warp the signal in the Fourier domain. So I haven't filtered. I haven't done anything except just added a nonlinear phase. It reshapes the signal. If I add that nonlinear phase plus a linear phase, not only does it reshape it, but it also shifts it in time. So all this is to say is you have a great deal of flexibility of signal man manipulation if you start to mess around with the phase in a linear and nonlinear way. Again, linear manipulation of the phase is going to create delays. Nonlinear manipulation of the phase is going to actually change the shape of the signal. And so part of your goal is to take advantage of those two processes to get an output response out of your system that you desire. And that's part of the basics of signal processing itself.